In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this awesome WLED controller right here, powered by USB-C. Okay, so parts you will need for this is obviously a power supply that is supports USB power delivery. You'll need, obviously, USB cable. And then, if you're using a pass-through like I am, you'll need another short USB cable for the inside. And then a pass-through, if you want to use it. Uh, and then you will also need one of these power delivery trigger boards, is what they're called, which I'll have linked down below. And then obviously, your all your WLED stuff, your ESP, 8266 or 32, and then you'll need a project box. And then to make it a little fancier, I'm going to use one of these connectors running out of the project box through one of these wire glands. So I'll also have those linked down below. So what makes this project possible is one of these power delivery trigger boards. Now this one is great because it'll do 5, 9, 12, 15, 20 volts, all the power delivery different voltages. And they have ones of these that are set at a specific voltage, but this one's great to mess with because you can choose which voltage you want. It's also great to see what your power delivery charger is capable of. So for example, on this one, you use the button to select the voltage you want and see 5 volts and then 9 volts. But this one only goes to 9 volts. You'll see the 12 volts will blink because that one it doesn't have it. 15 will blink because it doesn't have it. And 20 will blink because it doesn't have it. So this is a great way to also test what your block is capable of. This project's going to be run at 5 volts because 5 volts is capable of up to 15 watts. And this thing will only take about 6 watts. So that's plenty of power. Um, if you want, you can do 12 volts. And then get 12 volt strips. And then convert down to 5 volts for your ESP. I should warn you though, 12 volts is as it it is a supported voltage by power delivery, but it is skipped by a lot of manufacturers for some reason. So not every charger you will get will support this, even if it supports all the way up to like 20 volts. I test this on this other charger I had. They'll go all the way up to 65 watts, but it has everything but 50, or 12 volts for some reason. When you order this board, it'll come with all these different attachments: barrel jack. A USB A, and then just some screw terminals. So you can either solder right to this thing, your wires, or you can solder on one of these. So you will need a soldering iron if you're using this certain board. I soldered on these little screw terminals just to make it easier, and I marked what side is the positive on there with a the sharpie, just because it covers up the positive and negative. So next, what we're gonna do is work on our project box. And I got these pass-through connectors, and if you don't like these really big, like, waterproof, bulky ones, I do have smaller ones linked down below. But, so we're just going to basically drill this, or drill a hole in this, and we put this right here. I'm just using one of these stepper bits. You can buy these at Harbor Freight for, like, I don't know, $10, but they're super handy to have if you don't already have one. And when you're drilling your hole, be careful not to drill it too high or too low, So you do have to get this metal nut on there if yours is not already secure enough but mine is pretty secure, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So now that you have that in, you have this nice pass-through, which I should straighten out, and then you can plug your USB-C cable right into this once we get the rest of it wired up. So now that we have that built, we're gonna take this USB-C cable, a little short one, and plug it into that, and then plug it into this, and make sure our pass-through works. Then we'll plug this into here, and bam, there you go. On this certain pass-through, if your board is not lighting up, you might just have to switch this around. Because see, now that I've switched it around, it's not lighting up. So this pass-through is a little specific about the direction, or about the certain direction you have to plug in your USB. But now that I plug it in the right way, if I can, and it lights up. So that's another thing to check. So obviously, if you set this to something like 9 volts, and unplug it, and then plug it back in, it will stay at 9 volts. So here's my old strip I pulled from my desk that I'm going to be using. I just had hardwired to power supply, and then obviously some pigtails to this. And so if you don't have this fancy, like, connector on the end of your power strip, obviously you can just, like, put these all together, you know? because it's all 5 volts, so both reds can go to your power supply, and both grounds can go to your power supply, and then hook just the data up. 
between this and between your node MCU and your power strip. But since this is how it is, I'm just going to leave it like this. And then all I have to do is hook these up to my screw terminals here. Except I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use this fancy connector here instead. So what I'm actually going to do is end up cutting this and soldering one of these onto here. So let me do that. Okay, so there's my soldering job. It's not the best. I don't look too closely, but we got our 5 volts, our data, and then our ground. And then I got some nice heat shrink here to put over it. So it looks all nice and finished. Okay, so now that that's all done and secure, now we can move on to wiring all the stuff into our box and wiring our WLED controller here, oh, which I have Velcro stuck to. I just had it stuck under my desk. Uh, now I can wire this all to this, which is very simple. To wire these all together, I'm going to be using some Wagos here that I have, but you don't have to. You can solder them together. You can, you know wire nut them, whatever you need, but these are just awesome, so I'm just going to use a couple of these to connect everything. But first what I got to do is get this wire, which is going out to my power strip. I need to get it through the side of my box here, just like I did this. So I'm going to use that stepper bit again, and I'm going to use this wire gland this time, which you haven't seen these before. They're awesome. You, they clamp down. You tighten them and they slowly clamp down onto your wire and make a nice waterproof tight connection. And they have them in all different sizes, which I'll have linked down below. So now I'm just going to stick this in this end so we can get that all wired up. And then it should be ready to go. Okay, so got that all through. Now we can feed our wire through here. boop a doop a doop And then we can hook everything together. Okay, so here it is all wired up. And yes, I know this wire is way too big. It's just what I had lying around. So, positive and negative goes from this the trigger board to positive and negative these Wagos where they're all hooked together your output and then your board and then obviously this same with that with positive and negative and then the data is just hooked through a two Wago from that to the data wire running through this so it's pretty simple wiring and then you just gotta make it all fit in here and probably it'd be smart not to make these touch at all so you can hot glue them into place or something if you want I'm just going to get them all organized in here now. That makes them stay in one spot the best. Okay, so I got it all weaseled in there. Yeah, USB extension cable going to there. Way goes, obviously, and my board. So now it's all good to go. So now let's see if we plug it in, if anything will light up, hopefully. Awesome, so it shows 5 volts there. That lights up. So it looks like it's all working. And if it doesn't light up, uh, you might have to switch this around because, see, that way it doesn't work. This way it does work. If that still doesn't work, you might have to switch the inside one too. It's just something weird with this pass-through connector. It's sort of picky. So that all lights up. Let's see if our strip lights up when we plug it in here. Awesome, it lit up. So that seems to be all working. And then we can go on the app here and see. So now if we go on the app here and discover our device. There it is, it responds. We can go in here, choose a different color. It all seems to be working, and it's really bright too. Obviously, you'll be limited to 15 watts, so if you have a really long strip or something that exceeds that, this won't work. So now I pulled out my power monitoring little doodad here, which this cable is really cool. It tells you how many watts it's pulling. So if you don't have one of these and you want it, it's linked down below. I'll have it linked down below. It's backwards for some reason, but you see. 2.7 watts is all this strip pulls, and now I'll show you how long this strip is. So this strip is only about 8 feet, so that should give you an idea of about how much strip you can handle off of this thing. So this is 8 feet, and it's only pulling about 3 watts, so you can do quite a bit within that 15 watt range before you have to up the voltage. So now, if you follow this video, you have this nice little enclosure here that you can run all your WLED accessories off of. It's powered by USB Type-C power delivery, 
And yeah, technically this whole thing's waterproof too. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video awesome or want to see more stuff like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button so I know to make more content like this.